Thumpers, what is going on? We're here for an episode of Twin Towers. We're doing the week four preview and picks episode. Parsons, how are you doing? I'm doing great. We are moments away from kickoff. The Blue Jays are finally scoring runs against the Yankees. Good things are happening all around. Starting a new gig that's going great. The Pats didn't lose a football game. Life is my oyster. The Colts are leading the AFC South. I'm exhausted. I feel like shit. But the Colts are getting married. Yeah, exactly. It's all good. It's all can't good. lose. Can't lose. And if I lose, we lose together. Her and I. Um, let's roll with our Thursday nighter, which will kick off in twenty ish minutes. Uh, the- on, on on that, hold up. Just gonna yeah. get in front of this. Got some great news for our Twin Towers team. Aaron Jones in this game. He's back. Also back, Christian Watson. Do we play him? Okay. Yeah. So no to Watson. No. 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 Uh, I've I've read things that they're gonna put a limit on his his usage. Um, I'm cool with going Jones though. Wait, wait. We, we don't have Jones in that league. I, I got overexcited. That league only has uh, Watson. I I mean Eckler. Eckler is who we're waiting for to come back. Uh, if you you know what, I, I'm gonna leave that up to you because this is your your baby. No, I'm 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 not into it as well. Thursday night games are kind of sloppy. We don't know if he's on a snap count. Too bad. Just right. like I said the vibes are immaculate. Can't lose. I need Laporta to have a nice game tonight. Let's yeah. get, let's get it. Uh, I'm just making sure I don't got anybody going tonight. That I shouldn't, etc. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, yeah, we start with the Detroit Lions minus two and a half in Lambeau. Who would have thunk, eh? Uh, over under is 45 minus 110. Money uh, money line is minus 135 plus 115 for the Packers. I know it's a Thursday night, it's probably the best Thursday nighter so far of the season for me. I, I, think, I think that's where I land. Uh, um, Chiefs Lions had the hype too. Nah, this is divisional. This feels like this matters. Uh, a real big ton. Both teams tied for two and uh, tied for the division lead at two and one with the dumpster fires both being 0 and three. Feels like a lot of playoff implications here. How do you see it shaking? What do you like? Let me have it. I kind of like the Packers here, man. Like two. they're two and a half point dogs. And they're at home. Lambo's tough to play in. This feels like this game should be a little closer to a pick 'em. I I like the spread. I also like the Packers just a live dog here. Like that defense is for real. I I think the Packers definitely compete. I hope they win. Um, I think it makes the division that much more interesting late in the year. I think if the Lions win here, they're gonna get a nice bump cruise for a bit. I think Jaden Reed has a game. I have a thought on over 38 and a half yards receiving today, even with Watson back. I still think they find him find a way to get him on the field. It might actually up his usage in Sorry, not up his usage, up his target share. Maybe not getting as many snaps, but still trying to get the ball in his hands. Um, man, them losing Aaron Jones and Watson for that first few games, that might be a blessing in disguise, learning how to win without those guys. And now Jaden Reed's like a guy I'm talking about. Like, I think it, it all – it actually could be really beneficial for and them. Romeo Dobbs has been excellent. He's he's like a beast. He's a beast. He's a I will beast. say, too, as much as it's not – the funnest way to do things. I like the under 45 as well. Thursday games are kind of kind of low scoring, kind of sloppy. I think the Packers D slows it down. I think the Lions offensive perception is different from their reality right now. I can see that actually. I can see that. They've been a little bit a little bit sluggish. Yeah. I can see I can definitely see the under. I didn't want to say it, but I can definitely I feel like I've become the Grinch with unders. I've become a little bit like cheering them almost or like either a shootout or play really, really tight under games. Um Balkans, Jags. It's a prime time game in our eyes. We'll both be up. We'll both be watching yep. it Sunday morning. Uh Mel's getting a sneak peek that there will be football Sunday morning at 9 30. I'm sure she's pleased as hell here that. Uh <laughs> battling with the EPL. Um huge game. Huge game. Very cool. Really is. Who would have who would have thought again? This would be a game that I have like circled. I'm excited for. It feels uh, like the Falcons are the hipster Super Bowl every week. Yeah, you're right. It really does. I have the money line here. So the lines were 
plus three, minus 110, over under 43 and a half, plus 135. I think it's this is more a play against the Jags than it is on the Falcons. Um, as we talked about on our recap episode, I'm not buying what they're putting down, their red zone efficiency. I don't know how you fix that by just going to London. If they win, if they win, I can also see nerds being like, they just need to play all their games in London. Ha 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 ha. Um, I do think their defense is a bit of a turnstile, if not a full turnstile. And I think it's a good get right game for the run game for the Falcons. As long as there's nothing fundamentally broken. I did not watch week three. So this is, this is going to be a good litmus test. If I'm the Jaguars, I'm going to get real aggressive early because this Falcons team feels like it cannot play from behind like at all. Like they have to, they have to be front runners. It's hard. It's hard because Desmond Ritter can't play football. She can't play that's football. The, that's it. Right? If, if the Jaguars can sell out and stifle the run game while Ritter flops around like a dead fish, the Falcons need to be on high alert. What gun to your head, what side do you like here? Uh, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of with the Falcons. I agree. I, I, and I, I, you know, I could have been lazy. I could have been, you know, probably the sharper thing to do what you did last week. Give me the team getting points here. Yeah. Right. But I'm just going to go money line because I think the Jags are frauds. That's really what I'm doing. But, you know, catching points here, would I be shocked? I'm just points? liking all, like, the plus three range teams. Like, the, the league yeah. feels so close right now. Getting that free field goal feels so good. That's a Rosillo tank. So it's big on that theory is the ga- games are so tightly contested that when they hang threes, you know, how worse you're coming out with a push or you're, you're on the right side yeah. of the three, right? Uh, I'll say – didn't watch last week, like I said, but the Algiers stuff sort of concerned me. You look the stat, the, the box score did not look pretty. So no. hopefully it's a get right game for him. I don't know if we're still using him in our league, but it'd be nice. Uh game of the week coming up. Miami Dolphins plus two and a yeah, half. No doubt about it. Plus one hundred. Over under is fifty three and a half. Money lines plus one twenty. Bills are minus two and a half, minus one twenty, minus one forty five in the money line. Uh this is for they're competing for second place in the division because the Patriots are back, baby. But this, this, feels, like, again. this feels like a playoff game. This feels like a playoff game early. Um, was, you know, I can never really do these fact checks on my brother because he usually does it during lunch when I'm trying to, like, scarf down my food. But he's like, this feels like the first time in a decade the Dolphins have, have not had to go to Buffalo in non-November, December weather. Like, this feels like the earliest of the season – and he loves it, obviously, with the, the way this team plays. And I'm like, yeah, yeah dang, what do you think here? Uh, I'm on the Dolphins side. They're one of my three picks. I hooked this one up to three. It didn't cost me that much to do it. I think it was like minus 130 or something like that, somewhere in that range. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of – it feels strange that we just watched this team hang 70 on someone and make it look easy, and yeah. they're getting a field goal. Uh, I just kind of want to ride that. Everything's healthy. Everything is going great right now. Uh, I want to ride it till the wheels fall off a little bit. So I'm on that Dolphins, that Dolphins piece. But I wouldn't be surprised if Josh rams it down my throat after I spent the last week bigging him up. I I will say I think part of the you're you're not wrong. Dolphins are the most impressive week three team. Buffalo was second. Buffalo defensively yeah. looked stifling. <laughs> um, Miami looked unbeatable offensively. Something's got to give. Uh, hopefully, I think I got a viewing or something on Sunday now, but I, I will be doing my best to watch as much of this football game as possible because I would love this to be like a AFC divisional game. Uh, these these fan bases don't like each other naturally. And I, I will say, although there's, there's a hype train, Dolphins fans are very skeptical because the Dolphins have given no reason not to be skeptical. And Bills fans are also uber cocky and still slightly skeptical so it's really great seeing seeing the two toronto fan bases just collide these are probably two i'm just so excited I, I don't know how either team slows the other one down this is definitely like a mandatory five bucks on the over yes like just i i can't even remember the rest of the one clock slate it doesn't matter it, this game will be a black hole on my tv because all the other little tvs are not paying attention to this game is gonna rock you're so you're, you are an idiot. Denver Broncos at Chicago must see TV. Someone's like got to win. Reels. Someone's got. Someone's got to win. The the Broncos 
draw uh, uh 70s is dropped on their face. They are three and a half point favorites in Soldier Field over under. How, how did how did a team beat another team by scoring 70 points? The team who scored 70 is a dog, and the team who got 70 dropped on them is a road favorite. <laughs> because the team that the the road what the favorite, fuck Chicago got shit rocked as well, obviously. Um the money line is minus 165 for the Broncos, uh plus 140 for the Bears. Um this is a shit off. This is a total shit off. This is this so is, bad. This is tough to get into. Um, tough to defend. This feels like one of the potential wins for the Bears for me, and I need them because it's, it's but, not about the Bears. It's not about the Bears anymore. It's about the pride. It's about like yeah. I don't I, I don't give a shit if they win two games, but and the Vikings win two. You can't say shit to me. It's when you when you win the bet and the Bears suck. That's gonna suck. Um, our DJ Moore stock just hurts. It hurts. Yeah. Oh but I feel like you took it because you knew that I was pot committed. So either Jay's right, and you're like, "Cool." Or... I have DJ more in four leagues. Like, oh, like I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, I know, because because you're the only guy in the room that actually was like totally out on this team. Um, I gotta <laughs> say, we didn't really mention the last one, but Fields going out there, lighting the coaching staff on fire, saying, "I'm gonna play my way," and then taking 50 passing yards into the final drive. My guy, you you got to come with more than that. He's doing it his way. Uh, it's the best. We're going to talk shit before a, a way worse opponent than the Chiefs. I'm sorry. They are the best defense in the league. I'm not knocking him for that. I'm knocking him for fucking burying the coaching staff. It's like, like timing, my guy. Like, talk, talk that big shit before you play the Panthers, not the fucking Chiefs. Uh... Yeah, messy stuff. I I will probably have the Bears somewhere. Just letting you know this this is my this is my do or die. This is the last time I shove the chips in. I haven't really taken I haven't taken the Bears on the show, so I, I've stayed away there. Um, yeah, four four and one on the season. You're five and four on the season. I'm surviving, uh, but so I did not take them just out of principle. But yeah, that that game's not going to be a, a pretty watch. People will be on the Survivor. I'm taking the Bears for my Survivor, mm-hmm. by the way. Are we still doing that? Even I though am. we both I, okay. I, uh, yeah. All right, I got one. Yeah, it's a loser survivor. This is it? I, I can't win. I can't hit. So here we go, baby. Uh, I'm going Bears. Uh, Ravens Browns really good one o'clock. Like you know, old school mud. Plus three for the Ravens. Over forty and a half is minus one ten. Plus one twenty five money line. Minus one fifty for the Browns. Um, I, I follow an account that was like, if you're into offensive lines, getting healthy and get, getting points on the road against Deshaun Watson, the Ravens are your team. So Staley and Linderbaum both coming yeah, back. I, the it, three points I like again. And yeah. Is this one of your picks? No, it's not one of my picks, but I do like it. I'll probably have it sprinkled somewhere. I, I really like the board this week. I'm going to, which means I'm going to lose money this weekend. That's just how these things go. But it's you got your new gig, man. New gig. You got to splash a bit. You got to splash the pot. I don't know you're here for you. Yep. Every week we can talk each other into the Ravens, right? Every week. Yep. Does it, 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 it does not fail? Getting points against Deshaun Watson. Come on. Yeah, I know. Against Deshaun, it's like our. I just it, it's like my brain like just stops taking in information. I see the Ravens jerseys and the Browns jerseys, and like the Ravens have points. I'm like <gasps> what? Huge matchup for the division early. This is a division division set week. I'm not saying obviously divisions are not won in September. I get that, but the road to them does really help here. This would be massive for both of these teams, whichever one gets off this night. I know this is tricky. I don't think it's available yet because we're recording this Thursday. I like an overtime result here. I I, I see this game going to OT. Something tricky. Yeah. I see that. I, I, it's not available, but I would definitely you have to bring back the Tyler. <laughs> yeah, this hey, you know what? Yeah, we, we definitely got to tickle that one back in. Um, yeah. Also, did you did you win the Jerome? Is it Jerome Ford? No, I got him nowhere. Same, and apparently he looked really good. And I told my brother, I'm like, hey, running backs, they are the the offensive line. That's the like ninety percent of them. That's what it comes yeah. down to, right? Opportunity plus a line. They're like. Yeah. That'll get you so far. Then when you add a chub to that, you get special. Exactly. 
Um, okay, shall we? Shall we move on to? I'm calling this the shit bowl of the week, just because Joe Burrow. Yeah, has, like Bengals at Tennessee. Tennessee Bengals are minus two and a half. Over under is forty and a half. I don't think the Titans are going to have an over under close to fifty this year. There's just the Tannehill so, effect. Minus one thirty. Wonder what this look ahead spread was in the preseason. Great point. Um, Probably like seven. Minus 135 money line for the Bengals, plus 115 for the Titans. Um, they're going to ride Burrow to the wheels come off, so to speak. Uh, I don't got much on this game other than it's it's really hard because I'm a Joe Burrow hater, as you know. Self-proclaimed. I'm, I'm here for it. I don't even like seeing him like this. Like, it's gross. Yeah. It feels gross. League's more fun when he's good. Feels really gross, and I'm just not into it. I do feel he's a great guy to love and a great guy to love to hate. And yes. like the league is better when he's good, big time. Um, do you think there is a world that Tennessee goes to Will Levis in like the coming weeks? They should, right? Or should I mean, they should have last week. Like, Tannehill's dead. Yeah, I, I I don't understand it. I would be lying to you if I tried to like break it down. I think Malik Willis makes more sense than this guy right now. But that's just okay. <laughs> settle down. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um yeah, I, I I would not I will not be watching this game. There's a zero point zero zero percent chance. Yeah, I, I think this Titans D line kind of has their way with that Bengals O line and turns this into a just a small. Is that what this is? Is is it Bengals offensive line issues? Was that a big thing? A little bit. Like Burrow is bad at taking sacks at the best of times. He holds the ball too long. Like Joe Burrow's a dude who wouldn't be who would be making the Miami O line look really bad right now. Is a great example. Right. I yeah, I got I got nothing here on that. Like I said, their O line is struggling, but Burrow's not playing on rhythm the same way. Yeah, it just it is what it is there. I think this one turns into a real slog. And you can see it there in the under. Like they, they got it set up 40. They're being very disrespectful. Yeah, there's there's obvious reasons for that. Uh, move on to the LA Rams. I always feel like seeing St. Louis. The LA Rams plus one in the division leading, the AFC South division leading Indianapolis Colts. Over defend under 40, this house. Defend this house. Over under is forty five and a half minus one ten. Both teams are minus one ten on the money line, so that's the way to go. I don't know why you would. Yeah, that's good. Um, man, this is this is like a, a tricky game that only a Colts fan can sort of put lipstick on a pig and be like, I'm probably I, it's definitely gonna be on the TV. Um, and I hate that the world is so circular that you were on the Minshew Magic last year, and now he is most likely gonna be the starting quarterback for the Colts for the for the next few weeks. And fuck, he's good. He's good. Solid. He, yeah, he's solid. Um, I would like he's to see way better than, than Zach Wilson. Yeah, I, I I wanted to ask you if you're the Colts, I'd ship Garner Minshew for like a third rounder if the Jets were desperate, I, I, right? Like, there's a few of these guys out there, um, and Minshew's an automatic upgrade there. Um, what do you think of this game? Think the think the Colts uh, pick a side? I'll go opposite for a beer. We'll take the Rams on this one. Feels like the right side. Uh, we haven't really talked about Kieran Williams, have we? We have not. He's been playing really well, though. He's looking pretty good. Uh, I think Cam Akers packed his bags due to the fact Buddy looks ready, ready to take over. Uh, not a great pass blocking running back, but to be expected, you know, uh, you know, th- this early in, in said career. Staff didn't look good against Cincinnati. Is that an, a Cincinnati thing? Is that an offensive line thing? I don't know. Um, I mean, it's not going to get easy against the Colts. The Colts D line is playing great. Yeah, and it's it's a hungry football team that's sort of been left for dead, right? Like you know, that's every team's thing. Is like, oh, everyone overlooked us. Everyone overlooked us. Fucking Colts fans overlooked them. Colts fans just wanted to win like two, three games. Uh, they've yeah, they've looked pretty solid. Uh, was very tempted to get involved with the Colts. I think I agree with you. the board. The board just had a lot of like, oh yeah, I like that one. Ooh, I like that one. This is one of those that just missed. This and the Bears. Um, shall we move on to the NFC South lead? Oh wow, 
Yeah, uh, this is one that I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like betting or watching. This is like, an, <laughs> I'm going to watch a lot of it because too, but yeah, this is this is not high on the watch meter. Bucks plus three and a half, minus 115. Over under is 39 and a half, minus 110. Money lines plus 145, minus 175 for the Saints. For th- the third week of four, I got the New Orleans Saints. Uh, it feels like the right spot, minus three and a half. When I say that, I'm hoping Carr goes. If Carr doesn't go, I think you can almost you can almost bet. Anytime Baker plays a real defense, I will be on the opposite side after what I, I heard and saw on Monday night. And I think that's a safe way to go about it, in my opinion. He does not look good when he does not have time and has to make superhero plays. Um, Mike Evans, Marshawn Lattimore, part whatever, 13, 40. Um, you, you don't like my pick. Eh? You don't like the Saints here? You don't like the hook? No, I, I do like the Saints. Uh, the, the hook is definitely the move. I, that half point is terrifying. The three-pointers are the right the right play. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm on it. The Bucks just aren't that good. I, I think the first couple of weeks were uh, Fugazi. Yeah. I'm a little worried we're going a little too far in the other direction just because the Saints don't really score points is, mm-hmm. is my concern. So them winning by the one, two is, is dicey. Like I said, that's why I think buying the half point is really an absolute must here. I don't know what Derek Carr's status, but I'm still confident in it with Jameis, full week of practice. Uh, if I'm out there, then I'm good. Remains non-participant in practice. That today's the big day for practice, right? Or is it tomorrow? One of the two is a big like decider day. Anyway, he's still out. Oh, Thursday, but I'm I I can't be more. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I, I still I still like the Saints. I think Saints are a better football team. And I, Sorry, I uh, maybe the the graph you sent is wrong. Did you hook it to three? No, I didn't. I didn't hook it to three. Oh. No, I did not. I, I kept it. I kept it at three and a half. Uh. I believe I believe they're they're closer to a touchdown better yeah. than the Bucks. That's just my theory. Uh, Camaro- I wouldn't be surprised. I, I think there's a real chance in two weeks we we are laughing that we ever thought Baker might be a thing. Yeah, true. Uh, game I have zero interest in even paying attention to the Commanders at Eagles. Commanders plus eight and a half, minus one ten. Over under is forty three and a half. Plus three hundred on the money line. Eagles are minus four hundred on the money line. Uh, anything here for you? I think the Eagles are going to roll them. I think they're going to just bleed this clock dry. I think the commander's strength is if they get up a little bit and they can let that line hunt. Their their biggest strength is kind of neutralized by that dominant Eagles line. I think they have a field day on the ground. I think they just jam it down their throats. It's it's the same performance as last week. Yeah, I I would be concerned about backdoor stuff here. Uh, if I yeah, the, I don't I don't love the line. I'm not going to take them to cover anywhere, but I think they just absolutely handle business. Yeah. If you drafted DeAndre Swift, congrats. He's been fucking awesome. He's looking like offensive player of the year type stuff. It's been really yeah. fucking good. Like seven yards of carry. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, we move forward. The Minnesota Vikings minus four and a half, minus 105. Over under is 46 and a half, minus 110. Minus 210 on the money line, plus 170 for the Panthers. I'm pretty sure they're going to throw Andy Dalton back out there. Uh, before you give me your spiel, the Panthers, the Panthers feel feisty every week. They may get blown out every single week, but their numbers always look very like, yeah, I can see them keeping it close. Yep. It's the way this week in every phase of the word. I know you have a side here, so let us know. Yeah, I'm on the Vikings here. They're 0-3. They've been in all three games against very good teams. I, I think they handle business on this one. The, the Vikings aren't good enough to win a Super Bowl, but they're still a lot better than the Panthers. Yes, they are a lot better than the Panthers. Uh, Steppers, I got chirped last week when I said this is my last shove on the Chargers. Or they're dead to me otherwise. I hope my co-host understands the Vikings. Fuck them here. Not that they, not that they've been cooking you, but yeah, this feels like must win territory. <laughs> this feels like uh, it, uh, it really does. If, if they, if they, if they don't cover this, I'm, I'm going to be pretty salty about the Vikings. I know. I know. Come next, next recap, <laughs> dude. This game's got Tyler. I'm bringing back the Tyler in here. Oh God, it does. <laughs> oh, it does. Um, I will, I will say, they should beat him. They should. 
but they they absolutely have to. Vikings, the Chargers, but there's about four or five teams in the NFL that are really good at losing games ugly or losing covers, and the Vikes are one of them. Uh, I was really happy with how Madison looked stat wise last week, so hopefully that continues. I'd like to get a couple weeks of like mediocre running back play for him because it's been atrocious otherwise. I don't think you're going to because Cam Akers is in town. He was, he was there last week, wasn't he? But he had been there for like two days. Yeah. I, I mean, Madison's going off almost a 100-yard game, so I'm thinking <laughs> – but it was the Chargers. Um, I think the right line of the week here. Pittsburgh Steelers minus three, minus 105. Over-under is 42, minus 110, minus 150 on the money line. Texans are plus 125. Why is the rat line is you had mentioned, I think, on the recap episode, Steelers are two and one, like, and the world knows that. And I think we both would agree the Texans have been spicy this this year. They beat a good Jag, Jags team, in your opinion. Uh, the fact they're only giving three here should tell yeah. you there's there's an uncertainty here. I am just going to take the plus three, but I'm way more interested in the money line plus 125. But I, on, on the card, it'll be plus three. Um, I'm gonna- the the Texans were my like my outside looking in pick. I I really liked them here. I I did counter my own play in my brain, and I was like, on Monday Tuesday, whenever we recap this, there is a real world. I'm gonna be like, why the fuck did I take a rookie quarterback against the Steelers defense? That's like that that is yeah. possibly a thing, but there's no no big shakes on the other end with the Steelers. I think to beat the Steelers, you just can't you cannot give them defensive scores. And as long as CJ can do that, he's looked really good. He's done all the proper things. Um, I really like. I really like the Texans here. And, and yeah, I'm with you. Know. And that means they're fucked. Like we're both in on it. Yeah. The Steelers are dropping forty. Yeah, exactly. Kenny Pickett's gonna look like a, a supernova. Uh, quick glance. Pretty good four o'clock slate. Your boy's back. Not bad. I mean, there's gonna be points scored. That's the cool thing. Uh. Raiders plus five and a half, minus one fifteen in LA home game for the Raiders. Over under is forty eight and a half, plus two hundred on the money line for the Raiders, minus two fifty for the Chargers. Back to back loser goes home games for the Chargers, eh? Yeah, <laughs> can't lose, or else you you get sent to the the principal's office. Um, it's a weird game for the Raiders. Chandler Jones just told the world that McDaniel's killed Aaron Hernandez. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm no head coach this week. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Uh, I I really liked your play here. What's your play? I really liked your play. Oh uh, yeah, the the over. Like now that you see you yeah. play defense. Yeah. And I, 48 and a half, it's like it's not crazy high. The Chargers kind of feel like an over machine. Yeah, I, I love that play this week. So the Chargers stayed under by two points last week, but for those keeping track at home, the Vikings were in the red zone like 14 times. They should have yeah. easily cashed one of those. Uh, Chargers defense, awful. We did not talk about it. Why did J.C. Jackson not suit up? What the fuck was that about? There was – I think it was a criminal thing. So, it there was, but th- – There but, was a reason. Yeah, he, he, he probation. I think he broke probation. But Staley said that wasn't the reason. <laughs> so, like, the, this franchise is cooked. cooked. Yeah, they're, a, they're fucking – they're a mess. I think they need uh, to change their team name. I think the, the Chargers name might just have like a well, witch's curse attached to it. Part of my take, guys, have a great take on them. It's good, they're the best, I think. Listen, they could they could lose all the games they fucking want. Wear those powder blues four or five times a year, and everyone buys back in, especially with the long haired quarterback. Everyone's in. Um, no Mike Williams, eh? No Mike Williams. That hurts. I I mean, big opportunity for QJ. Bang. There it is. See, I set you up. Knocked him down. Didn't drop QJ in two leagues that I drafted him in. Hopefully he gets more of a look. Maybe Keenan Allen shouldn't throw a touchdown pass this week. That'd be cool for my Herbert stock. I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel there. like I was against Keenan Allen in every fucking league last week. Just <laughs> fucking barbecued me. <laughs> Nasty behavior. Uh, real world, the Chargers lose this game. Just a real world. I, I'm yeah. Well, yeah. Going into the bye. Staley, it's loser go home. Staley potentially getting fired. Uh, I'm going to skip that game for now. We'll go Cardinals, Niners. Cardinals plus 14. Over Suicide 14. pick for me. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm running it back. Cardinals, come hurt me, baby. <laughs> uh, plus six, 625 on the money line. Minus 1,000 for the Niners. Uh, did you play this game? No. Nope. Nope. I've learned my lesson against the, the Cardinals. To be honest, their plus 14 is probably like the best play of the week. But uh, 
Yeah, I'm staying away from it. I agree. It does feel very like I, I, I don't think we see CMC in the fourth quarter here. I think this is one of those where there's like a 20 plus point lead. Got the back door is so open on this one. Uh, I, I, I don't have anything to say about it. Like, one's a, one's a juggernaut, one sure. feels like a high school team. Yeah, Niners has got to leave leave the stadium healthy. Uh, four o'clock game that all of a sudden is really interesting. The New England Patriots, yeah. six and a half minus 105, over under is 43 and a half, plus 225 on the money line, minus 275 for the Cowboys. Cowboys were without three offensive linemen last week. We know about Javon Diggs being hurt. Um, there's a roadmap here. There's definitely a roadmap. Fuck yeah, there is. I so I did hear a pod go into detail about how every time Mika Parsons lined up on the line with four others, they there were just big chunk plays in the run game. I don't know if that that can't have anything to do with Trevon Diggs, correct? That can't no. Have- so the Cardinals kind of use the Cowboys like aggression against them. The Cowboys just have their their linemen just come screaming at the quarterback every play, and we'll figure it out. And they just kind of like allowed them to like get a little bit of penetration and then pick a lane, and it worked really well all game. It's gotta scare you, like face facing the Pats. It's gotta scare you where they they have a very capable running back that's able to do the exact same thing. Yep. Um, the, the Pats plus six and a half was really really attractive to me. And if I weren't a Pats fan, I'd probably be on that too. But I'm just I I cashed a Pats bet last last week. Let's not let's not play games. Let's, let's that, enjoy a football game. That was a hairy one too, right? That was a little hairy. It's it's a five point game, right? It's like eh. um I think there's some fear with what how Mac looks against the Cowboys D. I think there's that fear. Cowboys back back at home, awful loss. It's not even back, it's that fucking O line. Like Yeah. They they could be decimated. Yeah, um, I I toyed with the over here. I think points will be scored. Uh, I think defensive score. I know it's low for a reason. Both I probably would say both top seven defenses easy, both really good ones. Yeah, hanging a mid forties number there tells me they believe there's going to be some points. Uh, Cowboys offense I'll watch very closely this week. I get I gave them a pass last week. I feel like they played from behind, not to their strength. This will be a, a real test. Uh, if Dak can't fucking figure it out. Um, Jesus, we're gonna get some good sleep this this primetime nights, baby. Chiefs at New York Jets. Can't blame the NFL for this one. This felt like an absolute dime of a game until A Rod gets hurt. Taylor Swift coming in off the top rope to save it. Fuck off. Can't do this. Um, this is gonna be the, this is gonna be the most watched football game of the year. Mel just was going play wild. She hasn't listened to a single podcast I've done for like a year. She heard Taylor Swift and she looked over. She smirked. She smirked. She's like, yeah, Taylor. Um, this is going to be the most watched football game of the regular season. And it's not because of anything to have to do with football. Oh, that was a cool question. So you have anything to break down for this game? Really interesting to see what the Chiefs offense does against a really good Jets D. Um it's gonna I have be really that. funny to watch Zach Wilson piss down his leg as Chris Jones chases him. Sure. Um, under feels like the right move here, which sounds nuts. Okay, I kind of have a bad feeling though that the Chiefs just ball the fuck out. I don't. I, Biggest I think prime time. Taylor Swift fucking J- drop forty five on the Jets Monday morning. Chiefs are back. This is Taylor Super Bowl. Jets D is, I think, too good to to like explode on um we'll see though so there was a cool question we saw on twitter i sent to you is tiger woods more popular than taylor swift am i butchering the delivery of that is that exactly more how famous it? more famous and i understood your point so it really is generationally an idea so let's just assume a 16 year old all the way up to a 70 year old the only reason i leaned taylor was both genders seem to know taylor both genders well, and more importantly, like people don't golf in Egypt, but they know who Taylor Swift is. Okay, but more, more of what I'm saying is the like. The are we are we just are we just narrowing it down to North America? Like, are we just talking Canada, U.S.? I think globally, Taylor kind of like vaults to a different level. I think so. I think if if we went North America, it's not close. 
It's not close to North America. I think Tiger Woods is the the correct answer, in my opinion, worldwide. He was again, I think I think like 2003 Tiger Woods was. I don't think it, it's close anymore. Yeah, I I, I if you go like, and if you count the young, <laughs> wash the what the young like you, the the children. Yeah, like yeah. go ask this question to 100 people outside of high school. But go out, yeah, ask this question to any any dude that's watched sports type deal, right? Like you'd say that same same exact thing. But all those guys also know who Taylor Swift is. For this to work, they have to know who Tiger Woods is and not who Taylor Swift is. That's hard, but I don't think it's that hard to find someone who knows Taylor Swift. I do. Not. I do. My dad knows Tiger Woods and not Taylor Swift. Thank you. One of one. <laughs> yeah, one of one. Yeah, straight up. Um, I think I think the young the young demographic definitely moves the needle. And worldwide is not fair for international pop stars. Yeah. It's not fair for worldwide. I, I always assumed it was just a North American question. Um, the better question is who's more famous, Taylor Swift or Michael Jordan? That's a fair fight. Yeah, I still I still give the slight edge to Taylor Swift. Definitely a closer fight though. Definitely. Seattle Seahawks minus one and a half in New York, closing it out with a tricky one over 47 this, and a half. This exact matchup was like one of the biggest fits things I took last year. I was on the Seahawks so hard and the Giants beat them. Yeah, rough times. I'm just I can't, I'm not, I'm not doing it two years in a row. I'm not falling. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't I can't even like guess how this one shakes out. I, I can't even guess. I, I think will, you're with me that you want to say that Seattle's a touchdown better. Yeah, but the, 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 the Giants just never play by those rules. But like I the Titans, I definitely want to want to lean that way. Uh, I just don't think I can because I think the Giants. Oh, big Laporta catch. Sorry, what happened? Big Laporta catch, like forty yards. Oh wow! They're driving. Uh, they just scored a touchdown. Boom! Same Ooh. Brown, baby. Come on, Raw official Amon. sun god of the stump. Touchdown stands. Yep. Clear as day. Say it again. Clear as day. No doubts. Beauty. One sec. Do we got him? No. Yeah. Shitty. I will say, I think, knowing knowing the Giants, I would not be surprised if they were to lose by a point here. The Giants seem like that kind of team. The, the Giants yeah. seem like one of those tricky teams. I I'm just gonna stay. I, don't I'm, touch it. Don't yeah. touch it. It's Monday stay. night, you're gonna be tired. You're not gonna want to stay up to watch you. You get yourself get back door. Yeah, can't do it. Uh, but I do want to say they're a touchdown favorite. The, the, when you have a moment, we'll, we'll go watch replay the touchdown. Amon Ra puts the the corner in a blender. Oh yeah. Okay. Corners. Uh, recap of our picks. I got Falcons bunny line, Texas plus three, Saints minus three and a half. You got. Oh, that was a cue. I thought they were going to keep going. I've got the Vikings minus four. I've got the Chargers and Raiders over 48 and a half. And I've got the Dolphins plus three. Uh, do you have an anytime touchdown fun from the hip? Go on the day. Okay, this one's not allowed to count because he's probably like minus 160. But Travis Kelsey's scoring on prime time. That's just a fucking fact. I. We get a little more history though while you do yours. I'm going to say Granson. I think his name's Granson. He's a tight end for the Colts. The reason why I'm going to say him is he did a really cool post that was cringy for everybody who's not a Colts fan with like, you know how those, there's those couples that take pictures of the babies together and he had a football and it was his first touchdown foot his first uh, touchdown ball ever. And I'm like, this guy's probably not going to be in the league for very long. A lot of love for him. Good I'm going to go with him for Minshew. Yep, that's where I'm my, going. My slightly less chalky one, give me Lamar Jackson. I think uh, that D-line forces him out of the pocket enough that he runs one in. Cool. Uh, Stoppers, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please like, subscribe, comment. Sorry about the recap episode and the abrupt ending. Uh, we had a quick pivot on the fly. So, once again, like, subscribe, comment. Let us know how we did. Sorry we're recording this on the Thursday night as St. Brown breaks the scoring. Um Enjoy. Peace, Stumpers. Thanks.